everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoterica. On today's episode of On a Technicality, we're going to be looking at how to take a cigar box and convert it into a super gun arcade stick for your setup. Something I really like to do, and I think you guys will enjoy it as well. What we're looking at here is the list of hardware you're going to need. You've got the cordless drill as well as a whole set of bits. You have a ruler, a circular file, two different hole saw bits, a large knife, a razor blade, ruler, painter's tape, and a block of sandpaper. So what we're looking at right here, I got these off slagcoin.com. That's gonna be your button template. You can print them and kind of put your hand on them to see what feels good to you. I went with this template right here because I do like that six button setup. So what I do here is I tape down that template, making sure it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna use a thumbtack and I'm gonna put a small pilot hole in each of the six buttons I'm gonna be using, as well as the joystick hole. Um, you will see that this is an eight button setup, but I do just use the six. You can use this for kind of like a PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox One, or 360 setup, or you can also just have a six button standard like Capcom CPS2 or other super gun setup stick. So I go with the six button, but by putting those holes in the middle, you have a little pilot hole for your drill bits once you start drilling those holes out in anticipation of cutting the circles. So you'll see on the left there is that hole saw and on the right there are those accoutrements of bits. We're going to be going up in size, uh, skipping a size each until we get very close to the overall bit size of the hole saw. So as you'll see here, I'm just going to go ahead and drill a holes through those small little marks I made with the pin and I'll continue to jump up in size on the drill bit until I get a hole that is almost the size of the hole saw because we don't want the hole saw to immediately go right into the wood. But additionally, we don't want to have to make the hole much bigger when we're using that hole saw. It does risk splintering the wood at that point in time. So now that I have those holes and I've stepped up in the bit sizes, you'll see that the hole saw bit almost fits directly in. And that is a good point for us to go ahead and be able to get those holes done. We do use the painter tape on the back just to make sure that things don't chip. It does help. So you'll see here, um, what I actually have to do is I have to turn the torque up on my drill. Um, the brake was actually activating, so I had to go from 7 to 10 on mine. Um, otherwise, the, that stop just keeps hitting. I do get the drill a little bit in the way of the hole here. You do have to use a lot of your weight to make sure that the box doesn't spin. But once that hole starts going, you will see that it makes a nice circle. And once that circle is made, you are going to have to use something to poke the wood out of the hole saw. I use a drill bit right here on the uh, back end of it, but you just have to kind of poke that out until you get the disc out. I'm just going to fast forward here. I'm going to put some holes in the box. That way you can see exactly what it's going to look like. I am showing you on this cigar box versus the one that I intended on using just because the one that I had for the actual stick was much nicer and I wanted to be able to focus my energy 100% on that. So we're using this box here as kind of a trainer box. Totally would work for a stick, just something I'm showing you guys. So you will see that I have all six buttonholes in right now. They are a bit rough and you are going to have to use that circular file that I showed you in the beginning to um, smooth them out as well as make the holes a little bit bigger. The hole saw that I recommend is one millimeter smaller than the buttons, so it's a nice fit once you sand in. So now you see the case that we're actually using for this project. All six buttons are in. There really isn't much to teach you on how to do that. You push the button through and then you just use the small screw clamp that goes on the back of the button to hold it in. What those four holes there are is that is the gate pattern for the arcade stick. We're using a Sanwa and that's where the screws are going to go. I make drill holes slightly smaller than the screws I'm using to hold the stick in. That way when I spin them, I actually self tap the wood and it fits very well. Um, those are hex headed screws and they're black anodized metal. I just think they look good. On the bottom here, when you do put that stick in, you're able to just put all four screws in the little holes right there, your guides. And then I just use a basic silver nuts to be able to hold everything in. It is kind of a pain to try to screw them in. There's not a whole lot of screw left there, but I don't want to utilize too much space inside of the case. So I do use a shorter hex screw. That way I don't have as much material going back into the case. But once you get all four of those in there, screwed in tight, you're just going to go up to the top and you're going to just, you know, screw in the last little bit with that hex head. I just like the hex head. It looks a little bit better than a normal screw. But that's how that is held in place for you. So to get the hole in the back of the case for the DP15 port, first thing we do is we measure it and we find that it's 39 millimeters wide by 15 millimeters tall. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking that measurement and we're going to be making a sort of template on the back of the case. Now I do this all with hand tools might be easier if you had a jigsaw, but this tutorial is for what you can do at home with very minimal tools. So what we need to do is we need to drill a hole through the middle of that template, 
so that we can actually fit that little handsaw in. It's a wood clean cut blade, mostly meant for like a jigsaw, like a handheld jigsaw, but I use it literally just in my hand. Um, takes a couple hours to make that hole. You need to kind of file it smooth, but once you are done, that DB15 port will definitely fit in. You'll see that it is not a quick process, but it does work for sure. So up top, we're just gonna drop on that black aluminum shaft cover, as well as a black aluminum dust cover to protect the inside of the arcade stick. And then we're just gonna put the ball top right on top. It's not wired up yet. We're gonna be showing you all the wiring and how to get this thing finished on the next episode of On a Technicality. But for this week, now you know just the general idea of how you're gonna get those holes into the cigar box or other wooden box so you can mount your controls in there. Thanks so much for watching. If you could do us a favor, just hit the thumbs up and subscribe button down below. It takes us a lot of work to make each one of these episodes. We definitely hope you enjoy it. Otherwise, we'll be back in two weeks uh, with the next on a technicality, showing you all the wiring of the stick and how to get it up and running on your super gun. But thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.